Oh no, she's chugging. Come on, clockwork, you can do it. Seriously, what the hell's going on with this computer today? Uh-oh. Okay. A couple of frame drops there for a second. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. We've got our second best of two of the evening here coming up. LGD versus Tong Fu will be our second best of two coming up for WPCA's coverage tonight. I'm Zayori, Slater to SoloCast once again, and thank you to the few of you that have stuck around joining us for Chinese coverage over the epic, epic star ladder that's happening right now. Looks like Empire pretty close to eliminating IG, or at least taking game one in this best of three series. Anyhow, in the context of tonight, uh, well, LGD, the pretty heavy favorites here over Tong Fu, but, um, well, we'll see. They had one upset tonight already, CIS 2 owing newbie, but, you know, I have to say, those rankings that they use to get things started, they say, like, Tong Fu is supposedly rank 151, most ridiculous ranking system ever. You know where they're getting that from? Gosu Gamers. And there are two big problems. One, it only factors in raw wins and losses. So it doesn't factor in the quality of your opponents. So technically, the retry are number 150, and Tong Fu are 151. The difference is Tong Fu is playing literally the best teams in the world. The, in China, the retry is like, obvious. I mean, come on, man. They play Starlighter. That's not even a team. And it also doesn't filter out teams that have disbanded. So there are a lot of teams populating that list that aren't teams anymore over the past few years. So when you see those numbers, those ranks, they're pretty arbitrary and honestly quite meaningless. Yeah, I mean, 151. I mean, Tong Fu is not the best team in WPCAs, but a think about how many Dota teams that is ahead of Tong Fu. Just, just, just think about it. Yeah, just like raw number of pro players. Can you even get together 150 teams? It's it's ridiculous. But enough of that. Let's hop into the draft as, uh, wow, this draft is going by very quickly. These teams know what they want, and they're going to get it. Oh, wow, yeah, that last match, uh, the first game of that star ladder just ended, so maybe we'll actually have some viewers here for game number one. So, all right, what's going on here in this draft? LGD did first pick the Ember Spirit, first bands. Fairly straightforward. Uh, the Lycan and uh, Invoker, what? Oh, yeah, Oh. Yeah, and uh, let's see. Yeah, it was an ancient apparition bat rider banned out by LGD. That opened up for our first pick, Ember Spirit. Tong Fu snagged up the Centaur and also the Life Stealer. Okay, LGD second pick, Marana. Very interesting. More teams utilizing the Life Stealer. We saw CIS use him quite effectively in our first BO2. They won both games, and it's all about having that delivery vehicle, which they've already found in the Centaur. One of the great things about those off-lane heroes that like the Blink Daggers, they work pretty well when you want to run a Life Sealer with Infest Bombs. Now, here we go. Third pick Rubik, but LGD, they third pick the Bane. I don't know what happened. Is there a chance that these players are watching and taking heed to my complaints, Roland? I don't understand. Like, we, we literally, no Bane. Weeks! Weeks we haven't seen any Bane. Like, ah, I forgot he's a hero. And now all of a sudden tonight, it's like, you know, guys, I think Bane works pretty well against Lifestealer. Oh, yeah, Zayori was right. I mean, it's it's not the end-all, be-all of hard counters, but Bane is really well-equipped to deal with Lifestealer. I mean, what, what really chapped my ass about it is, like, yesterday and the day before, we saw teams picking Axe to try and deal with Lifestealer. Axe is okay at dealing with Life Stealer. The ultimate uh, uh, Culling Blade will cut through the, uh, the the rage if he's under the threshold. So there is some utility there. The the counter helix, you know, does some some whirling physical damage, but you still have to get up into Life Stealer's face, and that's what Life Stealer loves. He wants you to get up in it. He's trying to get up in your face. But yeah, but still, Bane is. Just just better. He's just better at dealing with life stealing. Now, Tong Fu were on point. They probably thought that a Bane pick might be coming, and they grabbed the Rubik, a support that Fiends have been running quite a bit just in a vacuum, but Rubik works really well against Bane. Uh, Fiend's Grip is probably the easiest spell in the game to steal. 
the easiest spell because it's channeling. So Bane can't do fiends grip and then cast something else. While he's channeling, you just steal it. And as long as he's not fiend gripping you as the Rubik, uh, it should be a pretty easy one, uh, easy one to uh, snag up. So that was a smart choice by Tong Fu. And um, they were ready to grab that Sand King with their fourth pick. Uh, another one of those highly sought after supports. He's been banned out uh, in the first two games tonight. I think he was third or fourth banned both games. So we'll finally get to see a little bit of Sand King action here, which is, well, nice, I guess. Everybody loves the Sand King. He's pretty solid. The Chinese teams love him, and uh, they run him well. Probably an XBG Sand King, perhaps. No. XBG Rubik. Okay. So, who's the other support? Is it... Who's, who's Tung Fu's other support? Q. Yeah, that's right. U9's their mid player. Sorry, Fox is their carry. Or, and uh, MT is their off laner. Yeah, so LGD. They'll fourth pick the Ishkafel Darkseer. And, um... Uh, interesting. Very interesting. I'm trying to see the... The synergy here with the... Uh, with the Darkseer... Ember Spirit uh, will probably be the mid for LGD. You've got your Bane Marana combo for a safe lane. Then you've got your Darks here for the off lane. So LGD will just need a secondary support here. But as we saw earlier, Marana can play that role. They could do something a little bit different and grab uh, kind of a true position one and use Marana as a support if they uh, don't want her to be their carry. Now, the final bands will come out. Tong Fu take out the Chen, a smart choice, one that LGD could have worked very well into their roster. But... An even smarter ban from LGD, and that is the Outworld Devourer. He... Yeah, huh, what? Yeah, banning all... Yeah, just trying to ban out um, other delivery vehicles. Actually, both mostly mid-heroes banned out by LGD, at least the last three. Storm Spirit, Puck, and OD. So they want to make sure that Ember Spirit has a good time in the mid. And uh, Ember does pretty well against the first two. He doesn't really fare quite as well against uh, the OD, but uh, as we saw, actually saw that mid matchup earlier tonight, and he did all right. It's one of those where Ember can kind of break even, but ultimately uh, OD can kind of kind of poo poo on him once he gets the ultimate. So Viper was an option here for Tong Fu, a hero that works very well against Ember Spirit, but they opt for the Death Prophet, and this seems like a pick kind of. Out of left field. DP is pretty solid in general um, in terms of what she does. Like, I mean, she knocks down towers really well. Her team fight presence is really solid with the exorcism, but they don't really have any other push to go along with it. So there isn't really a big amount of push synergy. This just looks like a death ball type team for Tong Fu, where they're going to group up. They're going to have a five man death ball right when, basically, when DP hits level 11. They'll be five. They'll cruise around and look to knock down towers and uh, take some some positive team fights. Yeah, K-pop Tosis and Brian looking sharp in, in the red. Or, wait, did I say? <laughs> Jesus, Shiver and K-pop Tosis looking good in the red. Looks like they'll be casting coming up here. Yeah, that's embarrassing. Jesus. So yeah, sort of an odd pick with the DP, and I think Ember Spirit should have a pretty good time against DP in the mid lane. And part of the problem with Death Prophet, I always go back to it, is she does not play well from behind. She's a very snowball hero. If she gets a kill on Ember, if the supports rotate in, with the Rubik Sand King, there is a possibility to kill that Ember before he hits level 6 and get that Death Prophet a little bit of momentum. And, you know, if she hits level 7 before Ember hits 6, something like that, maybe knocks down an early tower. This could be really good for Tong Fu, and they could really take a lot of momentum in that mid-game. But still a little bit of a risky pick, I think, if... It goes the other way, and uh, LGD are very aggressive and gank the Death Prophet. She'll have her work cut out for her uh, in this match. Now we'll see what LGD want to do with their final choice. They will think about it. They'll burn most of that reserve time, and it will be a Luna final pick. So it will indeed be a support Marana to pair with that Bane, and it looks like they will just be cruising around as uh, the Death Squad duo, and it will be a Luna who's going to hard carry things for LGD to kind of go blow for blow. Uh, with the Life Stealer, very interesting choice, and we'll see how it works for him. Let's introduce our rosters here on the Radiant side. We have Team LGD. It will be Rabbit playing on the position one Luna. DD on the support Bane headed to the bottom lane. DDC will be the other support here on the Marana. Lin solo mid on the Ember Spirit, and that leaves us with Yao for an off lane Dark Seer. On the dire side of the map, we've got Team Tong Fu. It'll be Sorry Fox playing on the position one Life Stealer up top. Q on the def uh, part, whoa the support Sand King here on uh, in the top lane XBG on the Rubik did 
did it, didn't I? Oh yeah, you were right. You you called it. I was gonna say wait. Oh no, Roland called it. XBG on the Rubik. U9 playing on the Death Prophet in the solo mid with the funky. I'm not crazy about this Death Prophet cosmetic. It looks so so weird. I don't know. It's like it's so emo. Yeah, it's like a pink-haired Illidan with what? Like I don't understand why she has just one horn coming out of her head. I don't really. I, I, she, but she only has one. It's like an, a normal ear on the one side, and then she's got this like, per, it's not an ear, no, she's got both ears. It's just a singleton horn. I don't, I don't, I don't get it. I just, I feel like I don't understand. Uh, and then of course we've got MT in the off lane here playing on the centaur. No big surprise about that. Both teams pretty predictable in terms of their lanes. Uh, it'll be a tri lane, safe lane on both sides of the coin with supports utilizing the jungle. And, um, yeah, no, no real trickery, no curveballs, the predictable offlaners, the Darkseer as well as the Centaur will both be headed to the offlane. And, um, yep, pretty straightforward. So, Darkseer, he is a hero that's, that's fallen off a bit, but he's making a resurgence. We've seen him kind of hit or miss here uh, in the east as well as in the west, uh, the little bit of Star Ladder I've been privileged to watch. Uh, we've seen a, a couple of Darkseer picks, and... Um, I saw even that, yeah, even that uh, universe Darkseer the other day making those plays. So, still a really solid hero though. He had just great setup with the vacuum, and his, his problem is that he can't deny farm early on. He can get experience in the off lane, he can kill creeps in the off lane, but he can't really stop this life stealer with farming uh, or from farming. And well, Centaur similar problem. So he works well as an off laner. He does take a little bit to come online though. If he gets a little bit of farm. Puts out a lot of damage. We've seen a few times as well where it's just a little Darkseer here in the offlane, and all of a sudden he just dives the tower with that Ion Shell, and before you know it, supports are dying, carries are dying, and whoa, where'd that Darkseer come from all of a sudden? He gets a mech, and you've got this this tiny little guy in the offlane that transitions into this, uh, this snowball-y, big-nosed little blue dude. So in the mid, Ember Spirit seems to be doing okay so far. This is not a particularly difficult matchup for him. Uh, looks like Lin will be going for a Flame Guard build. He is 1-1-1 one, one, one at level 3. This is a matchup where I think you can really get away with that Sleight of Fist Searing Chains uh, build a lot easier. Uh, it tends to work better against squishy heroes in the mid. And Death Prophet isn't the squishiest of heroes, but not really the tankiest either. And if you can catch him in Ebola, um, you, can, you can do a lot of damage. But he will go Flame Guard, just uh, that more standard build here in the east. And uh, just easier to, to pressure the lane. And if U9 overcommits, you can punish it a little bit more. It's sort of like Flame Guard, you can get a kill if your opposition overcommits and they can't get away from you back into the tower. But uh, with the Sleight of Fist and a Searian Chains combo, you can be the aggressor. You can make the kills happen. But with the Flame Guard, you can't really secure the kills unless he, you know, basically moves past the river here and then gets caught in a fiery chain. Because, well, the Flame Guard, it makes you tanky against magic damage, but it doesn't do too much against those tower shots. And, of course, Ember Spirit very low on armor early on. So diving tower is not really viable for him. Dyer's bottom tower is under attack. Down bottom, LGD are off to a nice aggressive start here. Centaur on the tree line. They ping him out. They know he's over there, but they'll be happy just to chip away at this tower to get things started. Luna leading the way in last hits, 18 and 4 compared to the 14 and 8 life stealer. Funny how those numbers work out. Centaur will bump into Bane over on the side here, but not much will come out of it. Bane, 0 1 1 at level 1. Nightmare and uh, Brain Sap, no and feeble. Really no need for it. Dyer's Centaur is not even hitting creeps anyhow, attack. so a uh, pretty smart build from the Bane. And this should be a pretty early tower kill for LGD. Nothing stopping it. Down to about half health. And I mean, what can the Centaur do? There's no way he can repel this push. And, well, maybe they won't pressure it too hard. Marana will just creep pull. and actually pulls the Siege creep. So they may just wait for another wave. We'll see if he double pulls it here. Yes, he will. Uh, into the Seder Mind Stealers. MT looking to camp out the four minute rune here, coming up in just about 10 seconds. Does bump into the Marana. And nope, just forced to retreat. Not much this poor lowly centaur can do. XBG will rotate down, and they want to secure this rune. It will spawn in the bottom. Invisibility picked up by the centaur. Maybe they can make something happen. At the very least, centaur can come in and leech a little bit of experience off this camp. It looks like, uh, nope, there were no Dire Wards down. Just a couple of sentries put down. LGD want to make sure they have complete vision and uh, can zone out Centaur totally effectively. But uh, there is one Observer here on the high ground and one here as well. So Tong Fu, they don't really care about their Centaur too much. They care much more about rune control. And still a pretty even spread in the mid lane. Lin committing to that Flame Guard build and U9 
Pretty standard stuff for the Death Prophet. No point in that silence yet. Just grabbing the extra point in Witchcraft for some movement speed and gearing up for that ultimate to be a little more potent uh, at level 6 as well. Death Prophet, also a hero that works okay against Ember Spirit in general because she has a silence. Silences in general just tend to shut him down in the mid-game a little bit. And oh, yeah. He sees this big stack from Q and oh, wow, that little hill troll. Why didn't he aggro? Why you, why you no aggro, troll? That troll is the epic troll right there. That'll stop the stack. That's unfortunate, but... Ishkafel, he scattered it out in the mid. He'll rotate U9. He's in some trouble. The Ion Shell paired with the Flame Guard just too much. And as they finish off that Tier 1 Tower bottom, Ember Spirit draws the first blood on Death Prophet. And a bit of synergy that I didn't mention in the picking phase, but Dark Seer with Ember Spirit. The Ion Shell on top of the Flame Guard, it is a ridiculous amount of sustained damage. And we saw it used right there. Just nothing the Death Prophet can do. Too much AoE DPS. And she will take a spill. So LGD. They are just off to the races here. We see an even gain and then ploop, 2,000 gold, 1,000 experience in their favor as they draw first blood and the first tower kill of the game. So Q, he'll come in and try and clean this up, but uh, Yao, he's going to come in here as well. This is a level 2 sandstorm, only level 1 burrow strike. Yao, oh no, what are you doing, buddy? He takes a burrow strike and he'll just fall. He will get killed by the neutrals. So that's at least something. Did he spend his gold before he died? Yeah, he sure did. He bought himself a soul ring, so... Not too bad for the Dark Seer. Ultimately, he'll get a ticket back to the well, but I can't help but call that a small stroke of luck that the neutral is what finished him off instead of one of the heroes. Q, uh, I think this is a dead Sand King here. Flame Guard, yep, that'll finish him off in the Sandstorm. Nice setup from DD, and a uh, nice follow up here from Lin as well as he Flame, or, well, Flame Guard Fire Remnants forward, and that'll make it 2 to 1 here in Hero Kills as we cross that 6 minute mark. Still trying to make sense of that Dark Seer play. I mean, I know you want to contest the farm, but Sandstorm does a good bit of damage, and you're not you're not that tanky early on, man. Your Ion Shell can put out some deeps, but Burrow Strike. I mean, you, you can't you can't take that much damage. So, Death Prophet level seven. Looks like she'll be the mech carrier in this game. We'll grab Headdress as her first item. And not a bad hero for it. DP is another one of these heroes that has very low starting armor. And uh, she just needs to tank up. The name of the game for Death Prophet is surviving long enough to utilize that exorcism. But look at this Lin just going straight in. He pops the exorcism, but Death Prophet just gets obliterated. And this is where Ember Spirit just really starts to shine. Flame Guard did a lot of damage there. But if that was a level 3 searing chain, forget about it. Would have been an even easier kill. It, this is one of these situations where it doesn't really matter what build Ember Spirit goes for. He's just good. He poops on these squishy in mid heroes and um, yeah DP falls into that category and now this death prophet's in big trouble wasting the ultimate there this is that time of the game sort of like if you have a Rasta mid where death prophet needs to use that ultimate very wisely and uh, well now she won't be knocking down any towers with it there will be a rotation down bottom nightmare in the arrow connects onto MT now Luna joining the battle as well level 7 plenty of damage with that lucent beam Bane will be the one to grab the last auto attack and finishes off the centaur but that makes it four to one and LGD, with the momentum here in the early game, all of a sudden, 3,500 gold, 3,000 experience in their favor. U9 will bottle up a haste rune here at the 8-minute mark. So that's something that should keep him safe from death for the next few moments. But now this bottom tier 2 tower will take pretty heavy pressure. And what's really scary for Tong Fu is this Luna. Rabbit got a tower kill. Is about to get a second tower kill and has also picked up uh, one assist as they finish off that attack. centaur. He did go for a very early hand of Midas. And now this Luna topping the net worth chart by a pretty large margin. They will secure this tier 2 tower. No. Glyph is popped. Silence from the DP. She's hasted. Sorry, Fox coming in now. There is an Eclipse available here. Marana hops into the trees, but will get finished off by a Crypt Swarm. No Moonlight Shadow available. Marana only level 4. And Tong Fu, they will defend. They deny the tower and get a kill out of it, so very nicely done. Meanwhile, up top, though, Yao diving the tower with a level 3 Ion Shell. XBG, Telekinesis in back, MT. Oops, stomp! Nope, he doesn't have it. He won't use it. Well, he does have it, but doesn't use it. And Yao just surges back to safety. So either way, a Lu the Luna survives. And um, that deny, even though it was still a good play from Tong Fu, does put a little bit of extra gold in the pocket of Rabbit. And he's going extra greed mode here. Brown boots into Hand of Midas. Now into a Helm of the Dominator. Morbid Mask up already. 
it doesn't get greedier. This is like literally the greediest Luna build you can go for. Uh, and that early Dominator, of course, he'll grab a nice fat neutral creep, maybe one of these S uh, Seder Tormentors, start stacking up the Ancients, and then 5-10 minutes from now we'll see a giant Ancient stack get picked off by Luna. And uh, yeah, that'll just skyrocket her farm. So, Rapid, it's one of those things, if you can get away with it, why the hell not? They've put so little pressure on him throughout this game. I do like this choice. Just um, greed it up. Lifestealer, he went for a different build. He went for more of a fighting build here. Phase boots into drums. He'll take a little bit of damage here. There's the Fiend's Grip. This will just be a feed for the Lifestealer. I don't think he realized that the Bane was inbound with a Fiend's Grip available. And he'll just get obliterated. Add another one to the scoreboard. 5-2 to two here as we pass the 10-minute mark. Marana grabs the regeneration rune that spawns. Harasses back the Sand King. And everyone will just move back to lane. Adding insult to injury at this point. Luna, 5.5k on net worth compared to the 3.6k of this Lifestealer. Oh, uh, yeah. Game was good. It's uh, it's looking really rough for Tongfu. Now 5,000 gold, 4,000 experience. Dyer's middle tower Just absolutely no way to punish this Luna. Exactly right. Meanwhile, in the mid lane, everyone except Luna will group up and start pressuring this tier 1 tower. Tongfu in a position to defend. They do have some heroes on the high ground coming in. Death Prophet with an exorcism. Throws it out. Opens with a silence. There's a Burrow Strike onto Murata. DDC will get caught, but they can just reinitiate here. They get the Deny onto Murata. Very nicely done. And maybe, can they finish off U9? Nope. Oh, wow. Yeah, U9 still in big trouble. Flame Guard not in position. Can Lin finish this kill off? Hell of a sleight of fist in one second. Yeah, there it is. So they find a one for one here in the mid lane. But the Bane, the Deny on the Murata, what was the dot that made the Deny possible? Oh, the, oh, the Bane Sleep. Oh, I'm such a silly willy. Yeah, beautifully done. Wow, that's not an easy deny to grab with the Nightmare. Yeah, I, I missed it in the action. And look, they're 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 waiting here for the deny on this tower. And yeah, they, Rubik's like, yeah, I don't think I can get it. And yeah, it'll be Mirana that gets the last hit. So yeah, beautiful deny from the from the Bane. That's one of those that it's sort of a lucky deny. You just throw it and hope for the best. And uh, they got it that time. So nicely done. So let's take a look at item pickups here. Darkseer, uh, he's probably the mech carrier, still just working on a regular old ring of regeneration. What's on the courier for him? And oh yeah, that'll be his headdress and his buckler. So well on his way to a mech. And Tongfu's mech in production, but uh, looks like they'll come out right around the same time. Death Prophet has the two core pieces with only about 250 to spare. Working towards that recipe. Not much else item progression though on the Dire side. Rubik has picked up Arcane Boots, which uh, is not too Dyer's bad. Top tower is but I worry about this Lifestealer build. Like, Luna went greedy and is also winning the farm battle. So we'll hold that thought though. It's up top. Oh, how unlucky. They had a two out of three, and both of them go on to, or both of the bolas go on to uh, the creeps. But it's all right. They still get an easy kill on Rubik, and this will probably translate to a tower kill. Radiant structures have been, or uh, fortify, fortification has been popped. As there is an exorcism, uh, Death Prophet in the mid. This will be a bit of a tower race here. LGD will be able to secure this one. And will they get back in time to defend? Yeah, Sleight of Fist attack. doing some work here in the mid lane. Plenty of time left on exorcism. And actually, they don't have the pressure to finish off that top tower. Maybe neither side will get a tower kill here. Tong Fu will be repelled for now as the creeps get cleared up. And they will actually just try and rotate up to the top lane. It is just DDC on the Marana. And yeah, this tower still has plenty of hit points to spare, so both sides will just back out. No tower exchanging. But LGD with a pretty sizable gold lead here, 7,500 and experience not too far behind. The tower count is 3 to nil in favor of LGD. A haste rune will go the way of Ember Spirit here. Uh, at That uh, was the 12 minute rune, just about to hit the uh, 14 minute mark. That's your mech on Yao's Darkseer. And now level 8, still sitting on brown boots, but pretty standard Darkseer build here. No point in that wall of replica quite yet. But an ability worth leveling up. A lot of people forget that the wall does 150 straight damage. So you do see some Darkseer players, not commonly, but some will actually grab the wall of Replica at level 6 just for a little bit of extra burst damage. But this is a pretty more, this is a more well-rounded Darkseer build, the 242, and uh, kind of a bit more common as well. Ion Shell Primary, but get those value points in Surge as well as Vacuum. Darkseer is kind of like Dazzle in the sense that um, he, he kind of benefits, all of his abilities are worth leveling up, so you kind of have to pick your poison. But Ion Shell, that common primary arrow off the mark there was a little lag spike there probably uh, just us observing here on the world perfect servers but nice rage from sorry fox that will juke the bolas 
Yeah, it looks like they will press forward. Silence onto the Ember Spirit. And there's the Stampede from Centaur. They will go for Ember, but the defensive nightmare out once again. Sandstorm from Q off to the side. There's the Fiend Scrip onto Sorry Fox. Centaur will be the first to fall. Full channeled Fiend Scrip. DDC won't be able to survive, but they will get the kill on the Death Prophet. Now this fight should be pretty easy for LGD. In comes Luna with the Eclipse. Ember Spirit's already fallen, but the Sand King goes down. Luna just cleans it up. It'll be a two for four. Rubik barely survives. Walks away by the skin of his teeth with 50 hit points to spare. Top tier one tower killed by the Radiant. And LGD just continuing forward. That would have been even more convincing if Rabbit was there a little bit earlier Dyer's with the Eclipse. But uh, he was late to the party. Not to worry. He brought the chips and he dropped the hammer. LGD have a bug of sorts. So we will sit and do a pause here. But just just bug. Yeah, who knows. But uh, yeah, Tong Fu, they're in huge trouble here. Game was good, as Roland likes to say. And uh, I just don't know what they can do at this point. Like LGD, they've got the carry advantage with the Ember and the Luna. They won the laning phase. They're winning the mid-game handily. I mean, what what's the sign of life for Tong Fu? They have this odd draft where they have a little bit of pushing with the Death Prophet, but she's not tanky enough. She just has a mech, but no HP buffer. And once you take her down in a team fight, that makes it pretty easy. She's their big damage dealer, so if they can drop her while she still has the Exorcism on, forget about it. So, oop, looks like we will will resume here, and just a, a quick reset, so nothing too game-breaking or nothing that a simple old point-and-click can't reset tower. there, and tower. LGD right back in it. Wow, Luna 9k on net worth. This Bane is having one hell of a game as well. This is how you play the Bane Elemental here, guys. 4, 0, and 3. Good hero. Good hero. Working on a 4 staff, already has the Arcanes. And Luna is only 1, 0, and 3. That just shows how little pressure they've put on Rabbit this game. He's yet to take a spill, and they've just let him get away with this Ultra Greed build. So I'm not surprised to see that LGD are kind of dominating here. He's got a Yasha to go with the Helm of the Dominator. And a quick pause. Go, go. Like, they don't even wait for the other two. They're just like, go. Okay. <laughs> oh, boy. Funny, funny. Yeah, seriously, Luna, I mean, maybe she'll go BKB. It could just be a casual Yasha. She did get a Centaur, and it's uh, just a double stack here. So not even that many creeps for the Luna to kill, but still. Stacking it up, finding farm. She may just go the greed build into Manta. Could just go casual Yasha into BKB. At this point, though, it almost feels like she doesn't need one. There is a little bit of crowd control on the side of Tong Fu, but it's mostly physical damage. You've got your Life Stealer throwing the auto attacks. You've got the Death Prophet ulti. Those are your two big damage dealers. Aside from the, uh, the epicenter, which Sand King hasn't even leveled up yet. Q is going hard with the Sandstorm. And, uh, well, he's still farming, but where's his gold? Where are the items? He's got no blink. He's See, this is where the Sand King pick can kind of backfire. And sometimes why I wonder why some of these Chinese teams prioritize Sand King so much. He's a good hero, but he's not the end-all, be-all. He's 0-2-1. He hasn't set up any kills this game. He's just been farming in the jungle. He's committed to farming in the jungle with this sandstorm over epicenter and he still is nowhere near to a blink dagger doesn't even have arcane boots up yet i mean he's just had no impact in this game he's piss poor and has just been um has just been unable to really really do anything at all so that's one of, one of the bigger disparities for uh for tong fu and Fire Remnant forward. They're looking for Q. Oh, wow. That just out of range of that Sleight of Fist there. And probably would have been a kill, especially if he could have connected with the Fiery Bolas. I think they would have been able to secure that one. But they'll just clear up this Creep Wave here. And L I think LGD can just take a straight-up fight, even if it's in the tower range. Centaur does use the ultimate to initiate. They'll hop forward. Yao, he gets caught inside the Fiend's Grip. Stolen from the Rubik. That's a dead Dark Seer to get things started. Exorcism comes out. Who are they going to catch? Yeah, it looks like it will be Ember Spirit. He'll get silenced up. A little bit of return damage, but they'll still find the kills. And that will be a two for nil. Moonlight Shadows on. Double buybacks coming here from LGD. He'll drop the hammer. There's the uh, Eclipse. It'll be enough to finish off Rubik. Sorry, Fox. Very low. He lays in the right clicks. He survives for now. He still falls to the end. They finish off Luna. His Centaur comes in, but Darkseer cleans it up with a triple kill. That'll be a one for five after the initial two fall. The buybacks from LGD. Well worth it. And Tong Fu get punished. They find vengeance. And well, they get a kill on Luna, which is good news. But great setup from LGD. Whew.
Yeah, they didn't know the Moonlight Shadow was on, and they had no idea that Luna was coming. It was a good play from Rubik. I hadn't realized that he stole the uh, the Fiend script. He did survive that last fight, so that was a little cheeky Dyer's play from XBG. And even though Tong Fu do get cleaned up, Dyer's still a great way to uh, to start off that fight uh, showing off the Fiend script. <laughs> and Fiery Bowl is on XBG. They won't have enough to finish off the tower. Error connects on to Q. That was a rough burrow strike there, but... Hopping forward, doing a little bit of extra damage. Uh, again, Bull is out on MT, doing so much damage to this Centaur. They'll just be able to finish him off to the Wrath of Time. Now Q, he'll try and Sandstorm, but I don't know if that'll work out too well for him. He'll survive, but gets completely repelled. U9 doing what he can, throwing the Crypt Swarms. Sorry, Fox, now stuck inside of a Nightmare. And he will jump into one of the Radiant Creeps. They can't deny it. So he'll be safe for now. But now the tower will finish it off. Q, he'll die to the dots. At this point, Tong Fu are just getting ripped apart in LGD. They'll chase down Sorry Fox. He has Rage for now. Silence coming out onto Ember Spirit. That'll buy them some time. He's taking tower shots. Silence expires. Fiery Bolas secure the kill onto the Life Stealer. Now U9. He'll get picked off. Bane finishes him down. And a three for nil. Tong Fu just running in one at a time. That wasn't even a team fight. That was just LGD dominating all over the dire side. Perseverance up, working on a battle fury. Whew. This is just a disaster. This Sand King. He's just he's done so little. He can't he can't do anything. He finally has Epicenter, but he hasn't even had a chance to cast it yet. Total, total tower count will be five to one. In favor of LGD, 15,000 golden experience, and uh, I hate to call him early, but this one's feeling a little bit over for game one of this best of two. I mean, I, I, I don't know. I don't know how you stop LGD at this point. It's, it's just ridiculous. Oh, I, yeah, I mean, I just, I don't know how Tong Fu can turn it around. Luna will be a little less greedy now. Grabs the Yasha and says, you know what? I need a BKB. I don't want to die right away. Like I did in the last fight, and there you go. Just has enough gold to grab a straight BKB, no mucking around. Throws it on the courier, and uh, we'll bring it for delivery. And oh no, Tong Fu. They're going to get turned into a deli meat here. It's a Tong Fu sandwich. And oh, lag spike, stampede forward. Rubik, he'll be the first to fall. Looks like there'll be a little bit of centaur between the Rubik and the lettuce. Maybe. Can they get a little life stealer meat on this bread? He doesn't have his TP up for 18 seconds, but I don't think they'll find him in the trees. So, uh,. Yep, that's a, a Tong Fu 2 for nil going the way of LGD. And now they will press on. One of them ports down. It will be Lin to keep this tower safe. Sand King did pick up a Blink Dagger, so he's finally starting to find some uh, some farm, some recovery. Still is not very much, though. Not game-changing. Well, potential to be game-changing, but isn't quite yet. No Glyph for Tong Fu, so this will be a free tower. Luna still with a 10-second BKB. I think LGD will just keep on keeping on here. Fire Remnant up to the top lane, so Lin will be ready to join the battle. Blink Dagger on the Bane, coming on the Courier. And with the Glyph down, no reason to back out here. Port gets cancelled. The Arrow zones him out, and they won't have a Life Stealer for this. He doesn't have a TP for 30 seconds. Creeps get cleared up, though. LGD, they won't press their luck. And uh, they'll just settle for about uh, two th or a third damage on that tower. Now, Tong Fu, they will smoke up as they leave the base. And they're looking for some vengeance here. They do have double Radiance blink daggers. Marana denies the mid tier one. But uh oh, they may catch someone. Smoke revealed. Blink forward. Hoof stop onto Yao. But a stampede. No follow up. It's a defensive stampede. They'll rotate towards the mid lane. Lin, he gets initiated on. Epicenter channeling here. And oh, he'll fire Remnant back to safety. He survives. Now the rest of the team coming in. Wall of Replica coming out. Rubik first to fall. Exorcism pop. But Tong Fu on the back foot. Arrow flies off the mark. Epicenter's already been burned. There's the Eclipse. Sorry, Fox. Obliterated by the Luna. And now they're truly on the run. Double kill for Lin. And Exorcism. It'll be on for a few seconds longer. But no, Tong Fu will just tap out. They don't have, bu they don't have the buybacks. And they just, they just don't have the... They don't have the power. GG's well played from Tong LGD or uh, from LGD as well, and uh, that will be uh, game one victory for LGD in this best of two between LGD and Tong Fu. Very convincing win. LGD are the heavy favorites, and uh, they're looking strong.
And you see a couple of the LGD players. They're all smiles, as they should be after a convincing win like that. Bane with a perfect game, 7-0 and 9. I imagine DD will be the MVP this game, get that little bit of IRL bonus gold. Well deserving. Bane was the big playmaker. He was involved in 18 of those 24 kills and uh, didn't concede a single death. So that wraps up game number one of our second best of two series at that halfway point for WPC Ace coverage tonight on Beyond the Summit. I'm Zayori, solo casting away. Thank you to everybody joining us here uh, in between Star Ladder games. Game two of IG versus Empire is in full force, and we've got it open here on our other monitor. So you're not alone if you're enjoying both WPC and Star Ladder tonight. We'll have a short break, and then game number two of Tongfu versus LGD will be coming up.